Ever since the original Sonic the Hedgehog movie trailer, I pretty much prepared myself for an absolute train wreck of a movie. Then the redesign came out and I thought, you know what, it looks better, but still kind of looks like a mediocre piece of shit. But then I went and saw the movie and I gotta say, I wasn't prepared to like it as much as I did. Why hello you love little peppercorns, my name's Noah Lee and I just got back from the Sonic the Hedgehog movie and it was alright, not bad. It wasn't great, but it was a decent movie and overall, I liked it. I wouldn't necessarily call it a good movie, but it's certainly enjoyable for what it is and what it is is a pretty competently made family film with a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog references and memes and a lot of stuff for Sonic nerds like myself to geek out about going on in the background. Let's get the elephant in the room out of the way right up front because the look of this movie is sort of just okay at best. The CGI of Sonic and Dr. Robotnik's robots mesh well in some scenes, but stick out like a sore thumb in others, and none of it's bad, which is sort of the MO for the entire movie, Sonic the Hedgehog, none of it's bad, but clearly this movie spent all of its budget on the effects themselves and sort of dropped the ball when it came to all of the live action stuff. But when the CGI is good, it's actually really good, in fact it's some of the best I've seen up to date. They made the smart choice with a lot of Dr. Robotnik's robots to go with this more cartoony, rounded, aperture science sort of look to them that kind of toes the line between something that could exist in our own world and something that could exist in like Sonic's world and it does a really good job of like bridging the gap between these two different worlds. But then there's other times when the CGI is really stiff and clunky and it's really clear that they didn't put as much time and effort into particular scenes as they did in some of the other ones and there's some of like, especially with like Sonic's mouth movements, like most of the time the lip syncing is great but there's a couple scenes where it looks like they overdubbed uh, like something that he had said previously, like maybe this is a holdover from switching over from the old Sonic design to the new one, but a couple times I noticed like the mouth movements just did not line up with, at all with what Sonic was saying, but these were few and far between and I think the only reason I noticed them is because I was genuinely like trying to find that when I went into this, so I was looking for that sort of thing. I don't think I would have noticed otherwise though, but they're there. Another area where they sort of drop the ball can be seen in the cinematography itself, which again is merely competent at best. Don't get me wrong, there are some really nice looking shots and framing in this movie, just not a lot of variety. Camera positions and angles are used over and over again, shots feel very stationary and lifeless, and a lot of them look like the kind of shots that I'd do in my own videos to save time while shooting and editing. There are, however, a couple of slow-mo scenes in particular where the cinematographers really pulled out all the stops and definitely had a lot of fun with what they were doing, and these scenes in particular are probably the most enjoyable parts of the entire movie, as they end up being very energetic and fast-paced and just a lot of fun. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't even notice the lacking cinematography if the movie had more locations to work with, because as it stands, there's like five there's a lot of road scenes at the heart of the movie. This ends up being like a road trip, but the road trip is very short and doesn't really do much and sort of just acts as kind of like a contrived way for Robotnik to chase Sonic throughout the entire movie. But then the movie ends right back where we began and it feels like nothing's actually been accomplished. Which of course begs the question why they bothered with the CGI live action hybrid in the first place, but I guess that's what we've come to expect from big budget family movies these days. Going back to the CGI, a lot of it is a mixed bag like I said. Most of it looks really good, but there's the occasional scene where they clearly didn't put as much time and effort into making sure that it all fit together, and surprise surprise, the scenes that look the best just so happen to be the ones that are shown off in all the trailers. Oh, and Speaking of the trailers, this is unfortunately one of those movies where pretty much every major thing that happens happens in the trailers, and the rest of the movie sort of just acts as the connective tissue and context between the main scenes. Which is a bit of a shame, because I went into this movie hoping that there'd be more than what the trailers had to show, and there was a little bit, but pretty much if you've watched all the trailers, you're not going to be surprised by what's in this movie, save for a couple of seconds at the beginning, and the mid-credits uh, sequel reveal, I suppose, and unless this movie ab absolutely bombs, we are going to be getting a sequel based on what they showed. And then we have the story, which as you might expect, also isn't anything special and really doesn't do anything outside of setting the framework for all the shenanigans Sonic and discount Chris Pratt find themselves in which, come to think of it, feels a lot like the stories in the Sonic games, so at least it's consistent with the rest of the franchise, and it's not a cringy or terrifying mess like Sonic Forces or Sonic 06, so 
that's something to be thankful for. Smile. Overall, when it comes to the look and feel and plot of the story, it's all pretty paint by numbers. The movie plays it really safe and succeeds at creating a movie that I imagine will appeal to mainstream audiences and might have enough meat on the bone for diehard Sonic fans, but not a lot for everyone else. And actually, judging by the crowd at the show tonight, which was made up entirely of little kids, their parents, as well as dudes in their 30s and 40s, and no one else, I think they hit the target demographic. All that said though, I actually like the movie quite a bit. The critic in me recognizes that it's sort of okay at best, pretty inoffensive, but nothing special, but the Sonic fan in me absolutely loved it. For one thing, I actually really like Sonic's redesign. I know a lot of people still aren't too big on it, but I think it's at least unique enough that it can stand on its own, and to me it sort of looks like a halfway point between the classic Sonic design and the modern Sonic design, which I don't think was an unintentional choice after they decided they were going to give it another try after this disaster. <laughs> But Sonic's personality, that's all classic Sonic, baby. The way he moves about and acts and the way he affects the world around him is very cartoony and reminds me a lot of the Sonic from Sonic Sad Am, which is probably my favorite interpretation of the character. And if he would have been voiced by Julia White in the movie, this might have been my favorite interpretation, which is saying a lot. I know a lot of people like the modern, more edgy Sonic the Hedgehog, but this lovable goofball right here is what I wanted to see, and it's exactly what we get in the movie, which is amazing. Sonic himself, a lot of the jokes that he has uh, sort of fall flat, but a lot of them are also quite charming and funny. Like, Sonic to me, like this version of Sonic right here, has always been this cornball who thinks he's way cooler than he actually is, but still has a lot of heart and cares for the people around him. And that's exactly what we see in this movie. We don't see the way past cool, like totally rad dude that we see in like modern Sonic games, but the lovable goofball that we saw in the classic games. And that's really what I've always wanted. And there's just so much going on in the background of this movie, like little references and nods to the classic games and the memes out there. There's a lot of references to Sonic memes. Sonic himself doesn't say I gotta go fast, but some other character in the movie that I'm not gonna spoil does say it, and it's quite glorious. Just gotta say. Although I think my favorite background joke is this one guy holds up a picture of Sanic, like this classic internet drawing is actually in the movie, like done on like notebook paper with a blue crayon. It's amazing, I love it. Another thing that I like is just how self-aware this movie manages to be without ever overdoing it. Make no mistake, this is one cheesy ass movie and the entire cast and crew knows it, but rather than using that as an excuse to phone in their performances, everyone took it upon themselves to ham it up as much as possible and the results are glorious. The star of the show, besides Sonic that is, is of course Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, who actually doesn't get as much screen time as I would have thought for such a big name actor. He's there of course, and each scene he's in is wonderfully offbeat and occasionally terrifying, but the character of Dr. Robotnik doesn't really do anything in the movie, he's just kind of there. Even still though, Jim Carrey gives it his all and it's one hell of an awesome and enjoyable performance. And actually that's sort of some weird coincidence of the universe I think, because when I was a kid, two of my favorite things were Sonic the Hedgehog and Jim Carrey movies, so seeing them both on the same screen doing a sort of throwback to their personas from 20 odd years ago is quite charming. But it's not just Jim Carrey who gives it his all though, because the other star of the show, James Marsden, does a fantastic offbeat performance as well, which surprisingly meshes quite well with Sonic's over-the-top goofiness. In fact, even the actors who played the side and background characters did a wonderful job, and really the only downside I can say about their performance is that they're all being held back by what is quite frankly a dull and basic script. But even still, everybody looks like they're having a blast in this movie, and if nothing else, Sonic the Hedgehog is one hell of a fun ride. So yeah, this movie kind of blew my expectations right out of the water. Although to be fair, my expectations were set pretty low, but even still, I think this movie is worth seeing as long as you go into it expecting a cheesy, fun time with very little substance, because if you go in looking for anything deeper than that, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. As a lifelong Sonic fan, it was great to finally see the blue blur up on the big screen, even if it wasn't really the movie that I would have hoped for. But as far as video game movies go, you could do a hell of a lot worse, and hey, at least it was better than the Super Mario Brothers movie. 
<laughs> Monkey. Anyway, what do you guys think? Did you go see the Sonic movie? And if so, what did you think? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and check out this playlist over here with all the other Sonic the Hedgehog reviews that I've done. I'm Noah Lee, and thanks for watching.